Hi everybody, today I'm going to talk about Krita 3.0.1.1 and that is a very nice drawing program that also does animation. And even better, it's open source, so it's free. If you go to the main Krita location, you can download for the different versions, Linux, Mac, Windows, the uh, main page for Krita is very nice. Um, you can click on Learn and you can see the user manual and uh, it's got links to lots of different portions so it's very good for learning about Krita. If you go to the FAQ uh, page it shows where can I find older versions of Krita in case you happen to uh, need those. So obviously the first thing is to load up a canvas so you go to File new and I'm just going to select uh, the custom document. Um, notice that there's templates that you can use so you can check those out. But I'm do, just going to do the custom document and click on create. Now like Photoshop or um, Clip, Paint St Clip Studio Paint, um, Krita is a very powerful program so there's lots of tools and lots of things and it's a little bit different um, than Photoshop so I want to just help people get started. The first thing that I think that you want to notice is in the upper right hand there is a little icon that allows you to choose your workspace. If you click on that you'll notice that there are many different types of workspaces and you can create your own. Um, if I wanted to do animation I can click on that and notice it will rearrange everything into an animation style with a timeline on the bottom. Onion skins and an animation uh, tab right there as well. It also has big paint so you can kind of see one style of painting. I'm going to select default for right now and that's what I would suggest you start with because that just gives you a very clean simple interface. Some of the other ones are more advanced. Now before I actually jump into drawing and painting in Krita and show you the different tools I want to first talk about um, the configuration. I've tried this on a Surface Pro, I've tried it on a Cintiq, and also a UG 19 inch monitor, and I've noticed a couple of things. On the Surface Pro it worked fine straight out of the box, however on the UG and the Cintiq I noticed a problem. Notice that as the um, cursor is over the menus it works fine, the cursor moves fine, but as I try to draw on the screen, it's not doing anything. Now you can't see it, but my cursor is actually moving. When I go to select the workspace, all of a sudden the uh, display is updated. And so I can draw again, go back to the display, and you see that it doesn't track on the canvas properly. Now I don't know if that has just changed with 3.0, but that is an issue, and here's how you can fix it go underneath settings and configure Krita. So even if you don't have this problem that's a thing to know because there are all different kinds of things that you can set uh, according to what you want. But for that issue with the Wacom uh, Cintiq and the UG go to display and turn off OpenGL. Now like I said it worked okay on the surface but it didn't work well here. So turn off OpenGL and when you do that things will work properly as you expect. Now another thing that I noticed here the pin pressure is applying but sometimes I'm using a screen capture and sometimes the pin pressure doesn't work. And I don't think that's a problem with Krita per se but I think it's a problem with the interaction with the screen capture program. Now with the UG I also did notice that the pin pressure was not uh, being applied properly. So again underneath settings, configure Krita, there is a tablet setting and I can go under there and I can change the pin pressure curve as I need it. I can add points in here so if I drag the line I can add as many points as I want. If I pull the points off, wait till the plus is there and pull them off then I can remove a point from the curve. Okay, so now that I've drawn a little bit on the screen here, you, the first thing that I wanted to know is how can I uh, clear the entire screen? Well, I can go to Edit and select Clear 
or just press the delete key and it will clear the entire screen. Now of course if you're familiar with layers what it's really doing is clearing that particular layer. Okay so the next thing that I want to talk about is the tools. So by default on the left hand side is your set of tools. Unlike some other drawing programs you don't have a whole bunch of uh, different uh, types of uh, tools like for paint brushes. You just have this uh, freehand brush tool. You, up above here are the vector tools, but for, for painting we're going to look at the brush tool right now. So I've selected that. Now when I say that there's not a bunch of uh, tools, I don't, I don't really mean there's not a bunch of paint brushes. I'm just saying in the toolbar there's one for the paint brushes. And then over here on the right in the default uh, layout there's a tab called brush presets. And if I click on that one, here I'm showing the favorites, but there's a drop down and I can see all of them. And here are all of the brushes of all different kinds in Krita. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. So let me go back to layers. But there's something else if you're working on a tablet like a, a Surface Pro. Um, if I right click on the toolbar, I can actually change the size of those tools. So very large. 14 by 14, whatever size is of interest to me, I'm going to set it to default. Now the other thing that's very nice to know about is while I'm drawing or while my cursor is on the canvas, if I right click on the canvas, there's a pop-up that comes up which is a really nice thing that you can customize the tools that are in there, but by default it has the favorite presets. So it's got a block, basic, bristles, hairy, all, you can read these different things, but these are very nice, uh, a very nice set of tools to start with. You also have your color picker over here where I can change the hue and uh, the brightness. And, and also, if you'll notice, these are historically the colors that you've chosen. So if I change to a, a green color here and I draw out on the screen. Now the next time if it comes up I see that green and if I'm going to select yellow I can go and start drawing and there I've got a history of the colors I've chosen so that makes it really nice to quickly go back to a particular color that you're interested in. If you'll notice in the upper right hand of this uh, color selector we have that history there as well. Um, this is the advanced color selector and if I click on that we uh, can see that I can change all different kinds of things uh, such things as there is a shade selector do not show but I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that looks like right now and select OK and there's this shade selector so I can customize lots of different things I'm gonna turn off that shade selector for right now okay so we've already talked about how to clear the entire screen by pressing delete or edit clear. Well, if I'm drawing on here and I just want to erase a portion of it, how do I do that? Well, again, I would say use that pop-up selector and notice that you've got three different types of erasers. One is a hard eraser that is a fairly consistent thickness. Another hard eraser that has uh, varied by pen pressure. Let's take a look at that one. Notice that if I press very lightly I get a very thin line. If I press hard I get a thicker line so I can control that. And then um, we've got a kneaded eraser so a softer edge there so I can erase more softly. Now again those favorites are over here in the brush presets and you can see all the different kinds of brushes. Um, so I'm not going to go through all of these. You can try them, but you can see here some of those favorites that were used. Oh, let me show you also another interesting favorite is this marker. Notice that the angle that you draw that pen or you drag your cursor in will actually change the orientation of the brush tip, which is a really nice uh, thing. Now over on the right hand side of these brush presets, um, there is that drop down menu that I can select and uh, that might be a nice thing if you're just starting I click on this and I can show thumbnails or details in the details I can see it's a much longer list but I can see the names of the different uh, types of uh, preset brushes and they're alphabetized so that helps you find things more easily 
So for example, if I'm looking for an eraser, I just scroll down to the eraser area. Now the next thing to show in the brushes is to the left we have a drop down menu here and I can select that and it's by default it says all but all of these different types block, circle, erasers um, we can select those and it will limit what we can see in our list. Um, now again for this pop-up that has the favorites so I'm going to select the favorites and we can see those there now the way that it decides these favorites is there's a thing called the tagging system. And so it, it uh, maybe you've done photos, you can put tags on your photos. So right here, if I click on that tag area, I can go in, I can rename the tag, I can add a new tag, or I can delete the tag. And so that will then, uh, if I delete the tag, remove this tool from the list, or I can add it to a new list if I want to. So I can have multiple lists associated with a brush. and then I can drag the um, workspace. If I do control spacebar, then I can zoom in and out. Now notice on the uh, interface on the bottom right, we have the ability to zoom there as well. And of course you have pan and zoom tools. Um, in some of the other tools, we tend to have uh, other work programs sorry, paint programs. Typically Alt is the color selector. Here in Krita, by default, Control is the color selector. I did so. Let's select a paintbrush and I can do Control, select that color, and as I move I'm painting with green, but if I select a white, I can paint with white. So let's look over here and of course there's your color selector over here. So these are color tools. It's organized by type of tool. So the painting or drawing type of tools are up here, vector tools are at the top, painting uh, tools uh, underneath, then in canvas manipulation tools like moving the canvas, um, and then over here is your selection tools, um, magic wand, different kinds of things. This curvy one is the one for the lasso, the typical lasso, and I can select what I want and press delete, so you're probably used to those kinds of things. As you might expect, when I select a paintbrush, then up in the top we have the control of the size of the brush. Let me select a color. And we can change the opacity. So those typical kind of controls. So I'm going to cover animation in a separate video, but let me show you very quickly a couple of other things that you'll want to know about. The first one is the layout of everything is very customizable. For example, the brush uh, presets, I can um, move the tab and the tab order will change. If I grab underneath the tab and drag, that entire palette will come off. They call them dockers in Krita. And I can turn these dockers on and off underneath settings, um, dockers. You can see there's a great big set of these dockers that you can turn on and off. Uh, so for example, things like onion skins, which is appropriate for um, animation. We can turn that on and off. I can click on the X to turn um, a docker off. So I can go to settings. I can also right click on the uh, toolbar section and the uh, list will come up. And so here I'm going to bring the brush presets back up. And again, I can select whatever I'm interested in. If I want to drag this in between, uh, notice that the shading changes to show me where it's going to put the thing, Now uh, the docker. Now if I am covering over something, it looks like it's going to replace it, but it's just going to make it a tab. And so that's how I get a tab to come up. And I can order them on the left side or the right side or whatever I want. Once I've got what I, the, an orientation that I like, then I would go to this uh, workspace control and underneath there I'd insert a name, whatever I want to call it, and save it. So that's how I can save different arrangements of the workspace. 
Now the last thing that I want to show is about the brushes. Um, all of these different brushes, you can get more brushes and you can create your own kind of brushes. So there's all different kinds. It's incredibly customizable and how you do that is up at the top underneath the uh, drop down menus there's a little icon of a brush once I've got the brush tool selected with a drop down. When I click on that up comes what is called the brush engines. So there are different types of engines. Pixel is the most common and that's very similar to Photoshop in the in the sense that you have a brush tip which is uh, um, a bitmap and it can be used for your uh, textures and, and brushes and you can see all of the different options. I'm not going to go through these different options. We've got flow, we've got the source, we've got painting, all different kinds of things. But the pixel brush engine is a different engine than the color smudge. So there are similar options but different. Um, there's sketching, bristle, shape, all of these different kinds of engines. So notice that you can create uh, just any type of brush that you're interested in. So that's a very powerful thing. But at first what I would suggest is again that you just use the default layout and select the different brushes. Start off with the favorites presets and then just select whatever colors you want start your painting and learn how to use uh, the paint brushes properly. Oh, one other thing that I will show you is if you press shift and touch the screen, if I move to the right it makes the paint brush larger and if I move to the left it makes it smaller. So that's a very nice thing if you have a desktop uh, that you're using this on. So anyway, that's the basics of painting in Krita.